Hey, Tim Schatz here again for C4D Training. I know I've gone over rendering in several of my tutorials, but to keep people who are looking how to do just a render from having to look through all the tutorials, I'm going to create this dedicated rendering tutorial. So this is just going to be how to set up your files, how to render it off, and how to change some of the settings under the render settings dialog. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have this scene here that I want to go ahead and render off. And I don't have a camera in here currently, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over here and I'm going to go ahead and add a camera. There we go. And so now we can see here's our camera. We have this little green outline because our camera is not turned on. So if I go ahead and rotate, I can see I have this green this green line here. That's my camera. And my camera's not on, so I go ahead and turn that on and it switches me back to the view I was at there. And so now I want to go ahead and set this up for render. So I come up here to my render settings box. And our first tab is the general tab, and we want to do a full render. We go to output, and currently, by default, output is set to 320 by 240. And I don't know of anybody that really uses that size anymore, unless you're rendering something to put into something else, and you don't need it to be that big. But if you're rendering off a movie or something, you probably want something a little bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's do a film and video, and we'll do video NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel. And it fills in kind of the information for us. 72 pixels per inch is good for web and film aspect ratio. This stuff all gets filled in when we pick our preset. Frame rate 2997. Frame range. By default, this is set to current frame, but if we're doing an animation, we want to go ahead and set that to all frames. And you can see then it goes from 0 to 90. Frame step 1, meaning that it's going to render frame 0, frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4, etc. We could actually step this and it would have it only render frame 1 and frame 5, or frame 0 and frame 4. And, you know, if there was a reason that you wanted to do that if you didn't need all of the frames. So just so you know that that's there. Then we go to our save tab. So this is where we say where we want to save this. And so right here where it says file, if I click on these three little dots and come in, I'm going to go ahead and save this here. And this is going to be my uh, test render. Go ahead and save. And under format, this is where you can decide what you want to render off. If you're doing a big render, it's always a good idea to actually render off single frames rather than a QuickTime movie or an AVI, just in case Cinema 4D crashes or your computer crashes or whatever. If you're doing a QuickTime movie, it's less likely you're going to be able to recover that. If you do it as single frames and say you're doing 0 through 90 and you get to 45 frames and the computer crashes, if you're rendering off single images, you have those 45 frames. You can just start rendering from frame 46 and go on. And then you just bring those into After Effects and it'll see them as a sequence and you can use them as a movie. So you can do TIFF. TIFF are, are pretty big. Um, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes, you know, I'll even go to a JPEG, but, you know, that's there's a lot of compression in JPEG. So something that a lot of people are using now is OpenEXR. And we're going to go ahead and use that. We can select on options here and select some any of the options we have for the OpenEXR format. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. With OpenEXR, we get 32 bits per channel. And then we get to pick our naming convention. And right now, this is just basically saying that it's going to give it whatever name we select. And so I've selected test render. So my first image would be test render 0000 and then dot whatever extension for the format you're using. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on alpha channel so that I actually have an alpha channel. You don't have to extract these these images or anything like that. You don't have to put in a green screen in the background. If you just turn on the alpha channel and you don't have anything in your background, you'll be able to composite this in After Effects with no problem. And if you're using sound like we did in our in one of the previous tutorials, you can click on Include Sound and that'll be included in there. If you want to composite this, say, in After Effects, 
and if you have lights or if you have camera movements or something like that, you can actually export a compositing project file here. You just click on save and you select your target application, After Effects, Combustion, Motion Shake, Digital Fusion. Okay. Next tab is our multipass tab, and currently we don't have anything set up for multipass, so we'll come back to that. Under anti-aliasing, by default, anti-aliasing is set to geometry, which is the lower quality anti-aliasing. So I want to go ahead and select best. And then under filter, we have a choice. And by default, it's set to still image. Well, if you're doing an animation, you can select animation. Or you can select one of these other options. These are all talked about in the help file for Cinema 4D. And then under options, this is whether or not you want to render the HUD, use the display tags, um, volumetric lighting, whether or not that's going to be used and rendered. So generally don't play around with these things too much here, but if you're interested, here they are. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some effects. So let's say you want to do some ambient occlusion. Those are here under effect. There's ambient occlusion. We could add global illumination. Let's really bog down our render here. And if I wanted to do multipass, I can click on multipass and I can say, you know what, I want to separate out. So multipass meaning it's going to render the actual images and then it's going to render out separate files for whatever we select here. And you could just say, add all image layers. Right here, you can say add all image layers. It's going to render off a ton of stuff, and you'll have all the options you could ever need. Managing the files might be a little bit difficult at times. So we could come down here. We could say we want to go ahead and render off ambient occlusion separately. And I'm going to come under multipass again, and maybe I'm going to render off global illumination separately. Even though I've selected global illumination and ambient occlusion, they're not going to be rendered off separately until I click on the multipass checkbox. And now if I go back to my save tab, in addition to my regular image and my compositing project file sections, I now have a multi-pass image section. So here I can select where I want to save my files. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the little three dots. And here I am in my same folder. So I'm going to go ahead and do test render multi. I'll go ahead and save. It's going to say, okay, there it is. Now what format do I want these in? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do them in the same format that I did my other images in, just so that I have the same file format. You could do it in any way you want. You could just do a QuickTime movie. If you're doing a QuickTime movie, you can do PNGs, whatever you want to do. So then we're pretty much set. Once I get my settings set up in my render dialog here, I can always come under Render Setting and come down to Save Preset. And I can say this is a preset to load later on so that I don't have to always be setting everything. If if I use kind of the same things all the time, which some people do because they're doing the same sorts of projects, it's a good idea to go ahead and save that and then you can just load it in rather than having to go through and change, make all the changes. So once we're done here, we just go ahead and we close that and we come to our render button here in the middle and we want to not make a preview because a preview usually entails a lower quality video for just kind of checking your camera moves and whatnot. We want to say render to picture viewer in order to get our full render. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and our picture viewer comes up and we see it's starting to render. And this is going to take a little while because I did add ambient occlusion and global illumination. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and rendered about nine frames of this because I just wanted to show you a few things here. So here in our history window, in our picture viewer, we can see the frames that were rendered. We can go to layer and we can do, right here is just showing us the image. If we go to single pass and we click on the ambient occlusion, we can see that's what the ambient occlusion multi-pass multi -pass file would look like. That would be our global illumination file. And then there is our alpha file. So that's kind of a quick once over on rendering. So I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training. Take care.